And he's so sharp on weekends, he doubles as a rototiller. It's Gary Johnson, former New Mexico governor and 2012 presidential hopeful. I should be your PR guy. And in Oregon... He used to be governor of New Mexico, and then he said things politicians don't often say. Man is superior to government and should remain master over it, not the other way around. Sounds good to me, but the political class didn't like Johnson. Why? I have vetoed the budget. Probably because Governor Johnson vetoed their spending. And now... I am running for President of the United States. Johnson wants Republicans to pick him to run against President Obama. But how can that happen? When mo I've also been an entrepreneur my entire life. In college, I started a one-man handyman business and actually grew that business to employ over a thousand people. New Mexico is a state that's two to one Democrat. I got elected. I promised to bring a common sense business approach to state government. I got re-elected by a bigger margin the second time than the first time. Uh, I have climbed the highest mountain on each of the seven continents, something that uh, was a goal of mine, something that I achieved. And the 16th Amendment, income tax, sorry. <laughs> and I'm advocating for the same, yes, with, with regard to eliminating the if you want some who, someone who will tirelessly advocate for smaller government, less taxes, more individual freedom and liberty, free markets, I'm your guy. Because there was no tax increase the longest period in New Mexico? There was no tax increase for the longest period in New Mexico. There was not one penny of entitlement liability uh, added to New Mexico taxpayers. I got reelected in a state that was two to one Democrat by saying no to government spending, by saying uh, yes to the individual, no to government. Um, and I just think it speaks to the fact that people appreciate good stewardship of tax dollars. I was a penny, penny pincher. Uh, if I could wave a magic, magic wand, uh, I would eliminate the federal corporate income tax. Understanding. <laughs> Are you people a bunch of corporate <laughs> chills clearly and yet you look so young some of you I'm Und sorry. well understanding that the corporate tax is a is a double tax you and I own the corporations when money gets distributed to you and I at that point that's when we pay tax on that reestablish this country as the only place to start up grow uh, nurture business waving a magic wand. I would eliminate the IRS. I would eliminate... How would you collect the taxes? We need some tax. I, I would eliminate the IRS. I would eliminate the income tax. Fair tax would be the only tax. Now that's waving the magic wand. I think right now that uh, what needs to be concentrated on is slashing spending, something that has never happened uh, in our lifetimes. What about education? Education. So the number one thing that the federal government could do to improve education in this country would be to eliminate the Department of Education. Give education back to the states. 50 laboratories of innovation, 50 laboratories of best practices, there would be best practice. There would be failure. Failure would get avoided, best practice would get emulated believing that the only way we really reform education is to bring competition to public education. So, federal government, give it back to me as governor of New Mexico. I'm going to push for a voucher system. But the reason the federal education department was created is because the wise elites in Washington who really studied this saw what the states were doing and they said, no, we can do better. We can get the best knowledge and direct the money. And, and of course, we, we all intuitively know that one size doesn't fit all, fit all. Washington dictating how 50 states should conduct education. Washington, D.C. telling New York City uh, what they should do when it comes to their education. Well, aren't they smarter in Washington than in many states? I take all of it back. You're, you're right, John. You're right. You're right. The Department of Education. Look, here's the argument. Here's the argument. Is the federal government gives each state 11 cents out of every school dollar that every state spends. But it comes with 15 cents worth of strings attached. The federal government says you have to do A, B, C, and D, and here's 11 cents, and the states spend 15 cents to do that. Also, the Department of Education was established after Jimmy Carter, not under George Washington. What has been value added about the Department of Education since Carter did that? Nothing. 
All right, you, you heard what uh, candidate Johnson said about education earlier. What's your response to that, Mr. President? Well, Gary Johnson's offering the same tired rhetoric about vouchers. Now, we need to fix and improve our public schools, not throw our hands up and walk away from them. Well, and uh, what do you say about the fact that uh, the federal government gives states 11 cents out of every single dollar that they spend, but that, the, but that it comes with strings and uh, mandates attached to it, that it's really a negative for states to take federal money? Well, I don't think it's fair to really ask him because he's actually just an actor. But, <laughs> but, but. It would completely eliminate the corporate income tax. Uh, as a country that values fairness, uh, wealthier individuals, those who have benefited most from our way of life uh, can afford to give a little more back. But this is what, what a lot of people believe. The rich are filthy rich and can give back. Well, what I hear all the time is that uh, our, our corporations are overseas, that jobs have been leaving this country. Let's bring those jobs back to this country by making this country the only place to conduct business. So in that context, how do you do that? Eliminate the corporate income tax. Understanding that it's a double tax, that we all own the corporations, and what, when income gets distributed to you or I, that's when we pay uh, the tax on that. And in the case of bailing out the banks, these were individuals, these were banks that made horrible decisions that were bailed out at, 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 my, at all of our expense. They should have been allowed to fail. Yeah. Take it away. I heard a remarkable thing on Fox News the other night. Uh, a politician actually um, mentioned a, a study done about the Portugal drug decriminalization policy. Ten years, for ten years, all drugs in Portugal have been decriminalized since 2001. And they found that across the board, all the harmful effects of drugs have decreased since that policy was enacted. And, and that politician th was? That politician was Gary Johnson. Um, <laughs> Portugal decriminalized all drugs ten years ago, and they've shown a 50% reduction in heroin use over the last ten years. I mean, that kind of flies in the face of logic. But that's what's happened. Legalizing marijuana will lead to less overall substance abuse because people will find it as such a safer alternative than all the other substances out there, uh, starting with alcohol. We've got an example out there with Zurich, Switzerland, where they made uh, free heroin available. Uh, you, had to, you had to register, but you got as much heroin you, as you wanted. The idea was, was to reduce death, disease, crime, and corruption. Uh, I met with the chief of police from Zurich, Switzerland, when he came to Albuquerque for a wor worldwide drug conference in 2002, and he said, when they came out with this program in Zurich, I and all of law enforcement could not have been more opposed to this. Death, disease, crime, and corruption was going to skyrocket. I'm here to tell you that all of those things improved, and the citizens of Zurich re-upped on this program. When you realize that only 8,000 people a year die from heroin overdose, and people say, well, that's because it's illegal. Well, gee whiz, if it were legal, if it were controlled, meaning quality, quantity known, you might not have any death. And pe but people will still commit suicide doing anything. It's true. There, there's a formula to the news, too, where every night we have the largest drug bust, and then we go from the largest b drug bust to the kingpin headquarters, which is a double-wide trailer. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is a formula. Formula, and it's just—it's uh, just—it's crazy. You know, it's crazy. It's when you. Well, I think that uh, if we legalize marijuana, we will take giant steps forward toward rational drug policy with regard to the rest of the drugs. I would legalize marijuana, and I say legalize as opposed to decriminalize, because I think decriminalize. I think decriminalize turns its back on half the problem, which is uh, the marketplace. When it comes to all the other drugs, in a nutshell, we should look at the drug problem first as a health issue rather than a criminal justice issue. But that's where in the Constitution, where in the Constitution does it say that because we don't like a foreign leader, we should go in and topple that foreign leader?